UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres described the recent climate projections from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change as a code red for humanity. However, we are still not seeing the kind of decisive action needed to combat this crisis. Businesses must prioritize climate change risks and boards are well positioned to help lead the charge. Firstly, boards must take the long-term view. Climate change poses a, a serious threat to all businesses and the ones likely to be most resilient in the future will be those that act now to build sustainability into every aspect of their operations. It's critical boards help shape the long-term strategic vision and oversee the roadmap of actions management will take in the shorter term to achieve it. Secondly, on building trust and accountability. Climate misinformation and incidents of greenwashing have led to skepticism over whether businesses are really committed to climate action. Boards can play an important role in helping re-establish trust with key stakeholders. That starts with building a common foundation of knowledge about climate change and ensuring that board members have the knowledge and skills to ask management the right questions about sustainability progress and push them to report on it clearly, consistently and comprehensively. I'm very proud of Deloitte's climate learning program, which we are rolling out globally. It's designed to empower our 345,000 people worldwide and inspire them to make responsible climate choices. And my final point is driving collaboration. Any serious effort to take on global climate change requires leaders to share best practices, inspire greater commitments and work together to address the climate challenges facing us and boards can play a key role in, in encouraging this collaboration. And the good news is that more companies are taking action. Earlier this year, Deloitte joined over 60 business leaders, including leading competitors at the World Economic Forum to develop and commit to a global systemic solution for ESG reporting. And these metrics will give stakeholders such as investors, suppliers and shareholders a common language as they work together towards achieving sustainability goals. Until COVID, we had been making reasonable, although very slow progress in some countries in getting more women into leadership. The world is now very different. COVID is drastically exacerbating existing inequalities and injustices. I'm very concerned about the disproportionate impact on women and girls. For example, we're seeing a dramatic acceleration in the digitalization of our workplaces, which presents many amazing opportunities for growth and innovation, but as we've been discussing today, can also exacerbate inequality. Boards have a key role to play in ensuring companies respect gender equality and DNI, whilst they take advantage of the transformative opportunities that digitalization has to offer. Firstly, setting the tone from the top on culture and values. This means being very clear about why diversity and inclusion matters within the context of the organization. Boards have to set the example of the behaviors that are expected and accepted and ensure poor behaviors are dealt with fairly and promptly. It's also very important to ensure that there is clear and vocal support from the CEO. The CEO needs to act as a champion and role model. Secondly, holding management to account for setting and achieving targets. Similar to climate change, diversity targets and women in leadership targets tend to be long-term, complex, and are typically not achieved within a single leadership term. Setting milestone targets can help break the goals down into smaller chunks and make them feel more manageable. The CEO and management team should have specific measurable goals related to diversity and culture and women in leadership as part of their annual objectives and a portion of their remuneration should be tied to the realization of these objectives. Boards can also help by considering diversity and women in leadership in all conversations, not just discussions related to talent. For example, when discussing a new business offering, offering ask about the gender split of the team and especially the leadership roles. Are women appropriately represented? And importantly, interventions to address gender balance should span the entire career life cycle, including recruitment, promotion, and succession planning to mentoring, sponsorship, and agile working. Finally, we should be embodying the change that we wish to see by building a diverse board. 
diverse boards perform better. They reduce groupthink, increase innovation, more effective risk management, better alignment with customers and employees. And there's increasing evidence that organizations with diverse boards out, outperform their non-diverse competitors. And whilst we've seen good progress in some countries, there has been limited progress in achieving greater diversity in executive roles, and especially those larger operational roles that could lead to CEO. This has to be addressed. And there's another area where boards can play an important role, ensuring, for example, a diverse pipeline of future leaders.